Let's, uh, I'll only be uh, a few moments today. I'll, I won't be quite as long with it being as cold as it is. But go ahead and turn to Joshua chapter 1. Just a couple of principles that I want to share with you today. Um, we are beginning a new series for the month of March entitled Triumph. The premise of this series is that we want to learn how it is that we stand in victory. How do we live victorious Christian lives. How many of you can think of people right now, whether in your family or co-workers or neighbors or somehow people in your life that you know are absolutely living defeated lives? There's no joy. There's no faith. There's no excitement. There's no peace. There's no contentment. And they are just living as victims. They're living defeated lives. Well, the premise of this series, if you've been following us this year, we began in the month of January with New Fire. In February, we titled it Battling Unbelief, and we followed the children of Israel through much of the book of Numbers and their march through the wilderness. And now we have come to this portion of the children of Israel's journey where they have a new leader, they're getting ready to go into a new land, and they are going to obtain the promises of God. They're going to inherit the land that God had promised them. And they're going to do it under their new leader, Joshua, thus the book of Joshua. And so we've been on a very strategic journey. We've been in a very well thought out, well prayed out journey. And today we really enter the excitement part of this journey, and it is called triumph. The premise of the series is that far too many Christians live in defeat, whereas in reality, many more Christians ought to live in victory because God has promised us victory. He has promised us no less. And one of my favorite verses in the book of Joshua, if you just want to note this, is Joshua 23, verse 14. As Joshua is about to pass away, Joshua reminds the people of Israel, not one word of God has failed. Can you say that in your own life? That will determine whether you're living defeated or you're living victorious. Can you say in faith and confidence, not one word of God has failed in my life. Not one promise that God has made me has failed. That doesn't mean we're not waiting on promises. That doesn't mean that we're not in the midst of war. That does not mean that we fight and that we struggle and that we battle certain things that we face. But it does mean that we are confident. That God is who he says he is. And God will do what he says he will do. Joshua 23, 14. Not one word of God will fail. That's why I love the book of Joshua. And over the next several weeks, we're going to be parked in this book. And we're going to go verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And we're going to learn as Israel stood in their triumph. We, the people of God today should stand, Ephesians 6, 10. We should stand in our triumph as well. So today I want to entitle this Gaining Ground, I'm sorry, Losing Ground Already Won. Losing Ground Already Won. For 40 years, Israel forfeited they gave up ground that God had already won for them, that God had already promised. Now, perhaps you have a similar story. Perhaps you have years of wasted life, decades of riotous living, decades that you did not serve the Lord, when now you look back and you wish you had have served the Lord. Well, my friends, let me encourage you. This is a new year, and this is a new season, and this is a new day. And no longer do you have to lose ground 
that God has already given you. No longer do you have to stay in defeat when God has already given and already promised us victory. Now, this is going to be one of the main parts of our series. This is a main premise of what we're talking about. Even though God had already given Israel the the victory, he had already given them the land. He's going to tell Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, Every place that the sole of your feet touches, every place belongs to you. He's going to tell him in verse 5, not one man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Friends, can we get any more victorious than that? He's going to tell him in verse 8, Joshua, if this book of the law does not depart out of your mouth, if you will meditate on the law day and night and observe to do everything that is written herein, he said, then you, your way will be prosperous and you will have good success. Can you get any more victorious than that? <laughs> and so God has promised this incredible victory. God has already given them the ground. He's already given them the land. But don't miss this. Israel still had to go to war. Israel still had to face Jericho. Israel still had to face Ai. Israel still had to fight their way through the Hittites and the Canaanites and the Jebusites and all the others that inhabited the land. Israel still had to fight. And friends, I want to encourage you today, you that are in the building, you that are watching online, you may feel as though you can't take another blow from the enemy. You may feel like your marriage is to the point it's time to walk away. You may feel like your health is to the point where you're ready to give up. You may feel like your wayward son, daughter, grandchild has reached a point of no return. You may feel like depression, isolation, fear, anxiety. You may feel as though these things have such a grip upon your soul there's no use to pray any longer no my friends let me encourage you today God has already given victory but you have to fight you have to go to war you have to be willing to step out trust God come to the banks of the Jordan River and say there's no turning back for me I'm all in why because God has already given victory. Warren Wiersbe said it so well. <clears throat> Christians do not fight for victory. It's already been promised. Christians fight because of victory. Isn't that a different perspective? So let's begin today in verse 1, and I'll be very brief from here. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Moses, the servant of the Lord, has died. And the Lord has chosen Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant to Moses. And if you're going to take notes today, I want you to note out of verse 1, number 1, transition. The Lord is going to come to Joshua, and the Lord's going to say something that is very interesting to me. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Arise, take this people over Jordan and possess the land. (laughs) This is the transition. You know, I I certainly don't want to read too much in the text, but I put myself in this situation. And had I been Joshua, and I had spent the 40 years in the desert with with these people, and I had seen this new generation come on the scene as we've backtraced all the way to the striking of the rock and and other situations in in numbers that that we've looked at and we've seen the way they've handled Moses the way that the people dealt with Moses and we've watched all of the you know I, I don't know how I would feel about the way the Lord transitioned me I don't know you know again I'm just putting myself in Joshua's sandals I guess you could say and 
I'm thinking, I, would I want the Lord to say something like, um, Joshua, listen, uh, you can do this. You can do this. Moses has died. Uh, I'm going to give you about three months to get your head around this. In about six months, I want you to rally the people, and you're going to cross over Jordan, okay? You got this. You got this. You can do this. That's what I would want. But this transition seems so abrupt. And the Lord says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now arise. Take this people. Go over Jordan. Possess the land. <laughs> There's a lot in verse 1. Let me just note a couple of things. Number one, I want you to note, I think the true meaning of this verse, I think what God is saying to every generation in this verse is don't put your eyes on men. Leaders come and go. Leaders come and go. They come and go in various ways. Unfortunately, even good godly leaders die. But John Wesley said it so well. God buries his workmen, but the work goes on. Amen? It's a good saying. When I think of that, I think of Hudson Taylor who built the China Inland Missions. And today, under a different name, but no less, today the ministry that he founded in the late 1800s is still impacting the country of China today. Even though Hudson Taylor died in 1905, as the Bible says, our work follows us into eternity. And even today, people are still being saved. I think of the great David Livingston. When I was in Africa so many years ago, I was walking through literally the African bush. I'm not exaggerating. There was nothing out there but tall weeds and whatever animals were out there. And I'm walking through the African bush with a few pastors and one of them says to me, have you ever heard of David Livingston? I smiled and said, yes. I said, but you tell me about him. I wanted to hear his perspective. He smiled, the biggest smile, and he said, David Livingston set my people free. I said, tell me about it. And we talked for a long time about David Livingston. Did you know that when David Livingston died in the 1800s, do you know that while they packed his body in salt and shipped his body from Africa to England to be buried in the great Westminster Abbey, even though they shipped his body back to England, do you know what the Africans did before, after he died? They removed his heart, and they buried his heart in the soil of Africa, where it belongs. I think of the great Billy Graham, who has passed just in the last couple of years, I believe in 2018, and yet his work follows him. If you visit the Billy Graham Library today, it is an ongoing gospel crusade. And tens of thousands are brought into the kingdom of God because even today the gospel is being preached even though Billy has gone on to his reward. We don't put our eyes upon men because men come and go. Either they die or for many they mess up. Perhaps you've been hurt by a pastor. Perhaps you've been failed by church leadership. Perhaps you're sitting at home watching this because you refuse to go back to church because a pastor hurt you. We don't put our eyes upon men. Leaders come and leaders go. Ministries come and go. Churches come and go. Kingdoms come and go. But the point of verse 1 is that God remains the same. God is constant. And while some disappoint us or some simply leave us, they go on to their eternal reward. God stays the same. But what does the book of Hebrews tell us? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So we see the transition. You can continue to read, but let me highlight verse number five. The Lord is going to tell Joshua. He's going to tell him not to be afraid. 
not to be dismayed. And listen what he says in verse 5. That no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Now, is that not a secured victory? And then note what he says. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Now, friends, you talk about a promise of God, but let me tell you the promise of God for us. Again, in the book of Hebrews, I think chapter 13, verse 5, if memory doesn't fail me. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, I think verse 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So today, you may be in a transition period. You may feel as though all of last year was a transition. You may feel that this year is a transition. Don't be afraid of transitions because God is the same. God is constant and he'll be with you. Number two, there is the instruction. Now what's the instruction? He tells him, you're going to be strong. I want you to be courageous. You know, listen, the Lord is encouraging Joshua. The Lord will encourage us. And you know what encourage means? It means to put courage in the heart. Amen? <laughs> to put courage in the heart. How many of you today, you need courage? Well, let the word of God encourage you. And let it put courage in your spirit, courage in your mind, courage in your actions. And God says, you're going to be strong, you're going to be of good courage. You're going to go forward. No man is going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And then he gives him this instruction. And do not let this book of the law depart out of your mouth. For if you will meditate on it day and night... If you will hearken to do all that is written therein, then what's he say? Then you're going to be prosperous. And then you're going to have good success. Friends, if you need success in your life today, and when I say success, I don't mean material. Don't, don't ever worry about material success. Because Jesus says, I know that you have need of these things. Your father knows what you have need of. The material things will take care of themselves. No, what's true success for you? How do you measure true success? Can you even define true success? If you can't even define true success short of assets and financial things, no, no. If you can't define true true success, then how are you going to know if the Lord gives it to you? That's why you got to meditate. And when you find yourself pondering on the promises of God, and you find yourself meditating, soaking in the Word of God, the promises of the Word of God, then that shapes your view of what real success should look and feel like. If that makes sense to you. And then lastly, for this morning since it's so cold. Then there's action. Obedience. We see the transition. Moses has died. Now Joshua, you're going to cross over Jordan. You're going to possess the land. I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. And not one man's going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And then we see instruction. Once the transition came, then the instruction came. Be of good courage. Be strong. Do not be fearful. Do not be dismayed. Don't let this book of the law depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it. Do it. And you'll have good success. And now lastly, we see the action. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 and 11. <clears throat> Joshua gathers his leaders. And look what he does. Now again... I'm more of a crock pot than an instant pot. I like to simmer over things. The Lord tells me to do something, I like to simmer over it. But sometimes you can't simmer. Sometimes you just have to obey. And rather than saying, okay, in three months we're going to get ready, 
Look what Joshua tells his leaders. Tell the people to gather their provisions, for in three days we're crossing over Jordan. Oh, I love it. Joshua didn't let any grass grow underneath his feet. He knew what God instructed. He knew what God said. And he did it. And what we're going to do over the course of several weeks, we're going to take this thrilling journey with Joshua. And we're going to see how because he obeyed, he lived in a time of miracles. Friends, I want to live in a season of miracles in my life. I want to see God do things that's unexplainable. I want to see God work in a way that people will look and say, humanity can't do that. Human hands can't do that. Human thinking cannot do that. That is a work of God and God alone. But you know what triggered it? Verse 10 and 11. Tell the people, gather your provisions, for in three days we're marching. Are you ready to act? Are you ready to move? Are you ready to do what God tells you to do? We're not going to just look at the promised land through our spiritual binoculars. As a church, we're going to cross the Jordan. We're going to take the land. We're going to go to war. Not for victory, but out of victory because of victory. I hope you'll take this great journey with us that we're calling triumph. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. And I thank you, God, that it is not only instructive, not only does it teach us, not only does it prepare us, but it is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. So God, may the word of the Lord in this month particular, in the month of March, may it have great effect upon us as we go through the pages of this tremendous Old Testament book simply called Joshua. And God, may you bring great victory into our lives. We refuse to be a victim. We refuse to live in defeat. We refuse that in Jesus' name bring victory to us. Do an unusual work this month, Lord. We invite you to come and show your glory. Show your power. Show your faithfulness, O God. Strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. church let's just pray right now I sense the Holy Spirit Father I believe that people with cancer are going to be walking through our doors give us the ability to pray over them and to see the power of God come upon them and heal them Lord I believe that people are going to walk through our doors that have a spirit of suicide May I even be so bold because I feel it in my spirit. Perhaps even a spirit of murder upon them. And God, may you give us the enablement of the Holy Spirit and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to pray with such an effect that it breaks the yokes of bondage and it breaks the bands of wickedness. many people walk through our doors in the months of March and April give us discernment I glorify you Lord God work in us work through us to your glory to your honor and to the upbuilding of your glorious kingdom 
We ask this in Jesus' name.